Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, I've got a fountain pen focus for you. The pen we're going to look at is this. This is the gorgeous Visconti Van Gogh in blue portrait. This is such a pretty pen to look at. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the pen. We're going to do a writing sample. Then I'll give you my thoughts and some scores on this pen. Welcome down to the mat. So here we've got the pen, a little bit closer up than what it was when it was in front of my face. This is the Visconti Van Gogh. I'm going to start just by turning this body around. The colours on this, they're absolutely gorgeous. This is based on one of Van Gogh's paintings and this is called the Blue Portrait. Just look at that, we've got blues, we've got bright blues, pale blues got some browns in there absolutely full of color and hopefully as this is turning around certainly on the cap I can see it it's capturing these stripes going down these I want to say they're about three millimeters wide and they're going all the way through the body and these facets they just capture the light there they just fetch that little bit more depth to the color of the material this one last twirl. I think it's so pretty. And um, because of these facets, when you're actually holding the pen, there's a tactileness to it. You can feel them as you're running your finger there. As I run my thumb across it, I can feel them underneath there. It's just an extra dimension, isn't it? Let's take a closer look around the body. At the top, there we've got the Visconti logo on a silver colored cap end. We come down, we've got a Visconti clip nice and springy I like the Visconti clips the cap again it's in this gorgeous colored resin isn't it but the cap we've got quite a sharp taper until really where the Visconti starts there on the clip then it seems to go to be the same width all the way down to we get to this metal band the metal band here we've got Van Gogh and on the back, we've got Visconti and Italy. Nice and simple, nice wide cap band. The cap band, we've then got a taper and we drop down fairly quickly to the body. The body, again, it's that beautiful material. Seems to be the same width until we get to, I want to say about three quarters of the way down. Then we taper in until we've got another silver colored end. The ends on both the cap and the body, they're fairly flat. Although I don't know if I would risk standing it up because it's not very wide. The cap, the cap, it's a magnetic cap. So it just pulls off. And then the beauty of this is once we get, oh, I'm going to say there, that's about a centimeter away. Just slowly do this so it catches so you can see it. And it just pops back in. It's a fairly strong magnet. You've got to really pull hard to get that out now one of the things i don't like about this well there's really two the first one is it's noisy people are going to hear you taking this on and off during a meeting and that can get annoying but the second one i don't actually like the fact it's magnetic i have a defibrillator in my chest i'm not allowed to put anything magnetic in my shirt pocket because it could interfere with that which means this pen i can't put in my shirt pocket most of my others I can. It's a convenient way to carry them when you're going to a business meeting. But this one, I say it can't. I mean, it's a good job I always take my Galen Folio because at least I can keep it in that. But it's just limiting. You've got to remember not to put it in that shirt pocket. Let's take the cap off. So that then reveals here. We've got a metal section. The section is tapering down. Then as we get near the end, there's a little lip. Then it tapers up and then down again to the nib. The nib is tiny. It's a number five size nib. It's a steel nib. For the price of this pen, I've got to be honest, I'm slightly disappointed by the size of the nib. This pen was 343 Australian dollars. That's a lot of money. For that, you're only getting this really tiny nib. Now you could argue and say, but Gary, the nib writes really well. Does it really matter? And in that respect, no, it doesn't. It's just that perception in your mind. If we unscrew the body, 
we can see here cartridge converter Visconti branded metal fittings so not something you'd even want to think about eye dropping let's pop this cap back on I'm now going to fetch in some pens and we'll do some size comparisons the first two pens I brought in Pilot Metropolitan Lamy Safari these are my standard pens that I fetch in it's just so we've got the same pens in every video that we're doing size comparisons with to me these all look very much the same size yes the body shapes are slightly different and certainly the coloring on that Van Gogh makes it stand out but size wise not a lot of difference let's take the cap off and look at them unposted unposted the Lamy Safari ever so slightly edging out in terms of length whereas the Pilot Metropolitan and the Van Gogh again still very much similar sizes if we look at the nibs all these nibs seem to be very much of a similar size which is fine until you look at prices 343 Australian dollars for the Van Gogh under 50 dollars for the other two big difference in price and this is where my mind it starts saying to me but Gary I'd expect more for that amount of money let's post these pens posted we start to get a slightly different story here the safari still by far the longest but now the van gogh slightly longer slightly more length to it and you can feel that in the hand over the pilot metropolitan i'm going to swap these over and fetch in some pens that are roughly the same price as the van gogh so the pens that i've brought in i've got a leonardo memento zero grande this is another italian pen so same country as that Visconti this was 377 Australian dollars it's a piston filler as I've already said the Visconti Van Gogh that was 343 Australian dollars cartridge converter and the pilot at custom 823 that's from Japan and that was 394 Australian dollars so the Van Gogh yes of the three it's the cheapest but when we look at them posted that Van Gogh looks minute doesn't it and just look at the nib here this is what i was saying about my brain saying to me i'd expect a bigger nib we've got that number six size nib there on the leonardo on the pilot we've got the pilot number 15 size nib both substantially bigger nibs both look a lot nicer as well to my opinion let's get rid of the caps and see these unposted unposted we've got the vacuum filling 823 that's slightly shorter than the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande remember this is the Grande version the normal Memento Zero would be roughly the same size and posted as that Pilot Custom 823 and here we can see a big difference down to the size of that Van Gogh let's pop the caps back on it's very much a similar story isn't it with the caps on we've got the grande leonardo memento zero that's looking massive certainly when it's sat next to that smaller looking van gogh and then just ever so slightly longer in the middle of the two is the pilot custom 823 when you look at it here i've got to be honest as much as i love the coloring that i see in the leonardo i do like this portrait and I think that's what you're paying for. You're paying for that extra prettiness for, is a nicer way of putting it because I think that does make it so much nicer. This is a pen. If I was going to give a pen to someone as a gift, you know, for some special occasion, this jumps out at you, doesn't it? Saying, look at me, I'm nice, I'm, I'm expensive. Whereas, you know, look at it next to the 823, which is the most expensive of the three pens, but looks fairly plain. Although, right in experience, because the 823, that's a gold nib whereas the other two they're steel nib let's clear this off and we'll fetch in the rule of measurement all right so here we've got the rule of measurement let's fetch in the pen so with the cap on this comes in at 13.8 centimeters unposted that comes in at 12.2 centimeters and posted there we get 15.7 centimeter if you look at some widths the width of the body that comes in at 1.24 centimeters the cap at its widest point is 1.44 centimeters and the section 
narrowest is 1.03 up to 1.15 at the widest so not a big pen but we saw that didn't we in the size comparisons let's get rid of the rule and we'll fetch in the scales of weighing so weight the whole pen now remember this has got some ink in it 32 grams the cap 12 grams and the body don't forget to sit still 20 grams not an overly heavy pen either is it let's move this out of the way fetch in some paper and we'll do some writing here's today's paper what i'm trying to do for these focus videos is use this ayush paper this is made in india it's an a4 pad it's a really nice fountain pen friendly paper and i'm hoping i might get two or three pens on each sheet of paper you know this is where gary tried to save money by using it multiple times let's do some writing shall we so this pen it's the visconti van gogh it's got a broad nib and cost wise 343 australian dollars so we've seen me using it now unposted you can see it's just about on that borderline it's usable i'm going to do the next line with it posted just so you can see the difference it doesn't feel over back heavy when i've got it posted the ink diamine marine love this color it's a gorgeous blue but it's just got that hint of green in it now posted i find it feels clumsy in my hand but that's because my preference is not to have pens posted so i'm going to do the rest unposted drying times immediate 10 seconds I'm not sure if this comes over on the camera. If you can hear some snoring, it's my office mate, my Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. She's laid on a seat, fast asleep and snoring away. Anyway, back to the tests. 30 seconds. 30 seconds, still getting a little teeny bit of smudging. So I'll do a belt and braces and we'll leave it for one minute. After a minute, we're nice and dry. I'm going to move the microphone down to the paper so you can hear the pen writing. that's a really nice smooth nib there's a teeny bit of feedback this paper that i'm using this i use paper it does have some texture to it and to me it makes the experience so tactile so nice to use it's not overly smooth but it's not rough it's just it's like it's gliding over the paper and then you get that little bit of noise you get that little bit of feedback coming through in the pen just so you know that you're writing let's look for line variations so there's no pressure I'm adding some pressure now this is a steel nib it does feel quite stiff so yes I'm seeing a little tiny bit there but I wasn't expecting a lot in the way of line variation my final test is my flow scribble So that made it all the way over the page no flow issues with this pen just fetch the pen back in there let's look at some writing on tomoe river paper so i've used two different inks in this pen so far the first one here this is diamine aqua lagoon gorgeous blue color again not getting any problems i'm not sure to be honest which i prefer if i prefer this one or the marine the other page we'll look at in a second is the diamine marine but nice no issues a little bit of shading coming through so we've got some nice character there if we take a look at the diamine marine 
again, nice looking ink. If I can get them both side by side, you can see a bit more saturated in the marine than what I see in the Aqua Lagoon. And here it fetches out that green tinge as well, if you look at them compared to each other. But enjoy using them. This paper, it's 52 GSM Tomai River in a Galen leather notebook. So what are my thoughts and scores on this pen? I don't like the magnetic cap. It works well, I just don't like it. And that's a very personal choice. I love the colour. I love what it's fetching out. There's a whole series of these Van Goghs based on different paintings. I'm glad I got the blue one, I've got to be honest. I think it looks really nice. These facets, you know, they catch the light. Hopefully that's coming over on camera. It adds that depth, it adds that extra texture to the pen. I think it's really clever. I think it looks really nice. I've only had two inks in this pen so far. That's Diamine Aqua Lagoon and this one Diamine Marine. But that's because I found that they look nice. They're a nice match. And I enjoy the colours of these inks. I may try some different ones, but they'll all be in this same colour family, I think. But the pen does leave it open for me to go for darker blues and even some browns as well. And that's just to pick out the colours. You know, we've got a bit of yellow as well there. Not sure if I'd put a yellow ink in it though. It feels small when it's not posted. As I showed you when I was writing, it's just about on the right size for me. I can post it. I might worry about scratching this material. And to me, posted, it feels clumsy. Very personal preference. I love the way it writes. It writes really nice. Price wise, it seems a lot of money. For less than half the price, I can get a Visconti Breeze. Just going to fetch that in to show you. The nibs are identical. There we go. You know, so there we've got the Breeze and the Van Gogh. The Breeze, as I say, half the price. But it doesn't look nowhere near as nice. Just look at that. It looks rather plain, doesn't it? That's why I think this is definitely a pen. It's something that you'd have for those special occasions because the pen itself, it draws your eye as well. Let's give this some scores. You may have already noticed I like the way it looks. So in scoring terms, this is dead easy. This is a 10 out of 10. It is such a pretty pen. Writing experience. It's nice to write with, but it's short. It feels small and that impacts the way it feels. When I post it, it feels clumsy. But again, feels small. Don't see a lot of line variation. Didn't expect that. But writing experience, I've got to take into account the size of it. So I can only really give this an 8 out of 10. Ink flow. No problems with ink flow. Comes out nice. I haven't seen a lot of shading, but I think that's more down to the inks I've been using. What I think I need to do is get an ink into here, which I know shades well, just to see what it's like. But as I've already said, I enjoy both these inks in this pen, so I'm a bit reticent to do that. So for ink flow, I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. Value for money. Always my hard question, this one. I've got to look at the cost, $343. I've got to look at what I can get from Leonardo, from Tobaldi even, for less than that. I've got to look at what I can pay a little bit more and get that Memento Zero Grande, get that Pilot Custom 823 with the gold nib. I've got to look at the Breeze. As I said, it's less than half the price. Same nib, same manufacturer. Just doesn't look quite as nice. Value for money for this one, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10, which gives me a total score of 8.5 out of 10. So this, it's been my fountain pen focus on the Visconti Van Gogh in portrait blue with diamine marine i hope you've enjoyed today's video what are your thoughts on this van gogh pen as i said it's so pretty to look at please drop a comment down below i'd love to hear your comments i'd love to hear your thoughts on this pen please hit the thumbs up button every time you like every time you comment it just helps with the youtube algorithm if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.